there's a phenomenon happening right now. It's called the yoni egg phenomenon. And I like to refer to that as the mick egg phenomenon. <laughs> there's a very ancient teaching. It's now spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misunderstanding. It's now reached late, late night TV, I think. It's yeah, like, yeah. like so big. And the information that these wonderful, passionate women are giving is so incorrect. It's um, a little bit guffawing me. And so I have with me today this beautiful friend, Isa Herrera. Thank you. And she happens to be a very um, well-known and well-practiced public health therapist and mm -hmm. uh, professional. And I really wanted to invite Isa to have a conversation about the use of the jade eggs. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So hi, Isa. It's just really beautiful hi, to have you here, and I'm Thank excited you. to talk about this McEgg phenomenon with you. And the first thing I want to ask you about is, do women really need more pelvic tension? Absolutely not. So what happens when women focus on having tight vaginas as their main exercise program? I think that the average person, and we have been doing this for a decade, we've written three books on the topic of public health, and one of the things that always amazes me is how many women exercise themselves into a pelvic dysfunction wow. and into a pelvic pain situation mm -hmm. because of the excessive tension and hypertonicity, right? And then that leads to a muscle that doesn't relax. So, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way we think sometimes that we may be not tight enough down there or we may be loose or we just had a baby. But this is not how what pelvic health is supposed to be like. Mm. It's supposed to be a balance. If you put tension in, there should be tension out. So what I find with the excessive tension is that women have sexual pain. Sometimes they have bladder dysfunction, so they have a lot of urgency. Mm. Or sometimes that can lead to stress incontinence. Or sometimes it just leads to hip pain. Right. So there's a lot of different kinds of symptoms that you can get from excessive tension in the vagina mm -hmm. and in these muscles. And would you say that um, you've witnessed also an effect on women's capacity for orgasm and pleasure around uh, this oh, issue? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we know about the pelvic floor muscles is that it's very, very um, heavily involved in orgasm. And in order to achieve an orgasm, there has to be this sort of suppleness, mm -hmm. this sort of flexibility in the pelvic floor mm -hmm. muscles because you cannot reach this height, if it's very tight, you sort of have the orgasm that goes like this, and you're like, you get there, and it goes <laughs> And that's a result of tight muscles. Sometimes yeah. we, but the majority of the women I treat, tight muscles. And you're seeing that in all ages? I'm seeing it in all ages, but believe it or not, I'm seeing it in younger women. So I treat women between the ages of 20 to 40, very rarely do I see anybody over 40, 45. You know, usually if I do, it's usually because it's a post-surgical patient or uh, stress incontinence. But when I treat the hypertonicity, the tension, it's young women, women who exercise a lot, women who are constantly gripping, women who are taught that uh, doing a lot of Kegels is the best way to achieve um, the divide mm -hmm. of sexual pleasure. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's not the case at all. Exactly. You know, at least I know that, and this is what we're discussing about this mick yoni egg. By the way, I love that term. <laughs> I just you need to you need to like TM that <laughs> because it is beautiful. Um, tell me a little bit also because there's a, also a phenomenon of women really interested in in pelvic weightlifting, and oh, wow. um, I mean. So I have my thoughts on that, but I'd really prefer in this conversation to have your thoughts as a pelvic health person who's seeing the end result of women who are aggressively um, attempting to lift a lot of weight with their vagina. I think that they're exercising themselves into pain and into dysfunction and into an issue where um, they're going to have poor sexual function. Okay. I see it over and over again. And the thing is, of course, there is an appropriate time to use a weight. And I'm not talking about excessive weight. You don't need excessive weight to train these muscles. You just need the appropriate weight and you need appropriate balance. And that's what people are missing. Exactly. They're missing this balance. They're missing that if you're contracting this, these muscles, then where's the release, where's the let go, where's the, the drop down? Mm -hmm. you know? So I am seeing a lot of women weight training and with their pelvic floors. And I think unless they really know what they're doing, they're doing themselves a disservice. And 
it's not going to work. And the symptoms are going to get worse. And then they're going to come and see someone like me. And I'm going to tell them, stop using the weights. And then they're going to cry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, and, and there can be some long-term damage. Because what I've seen on my end is that even nerve sensitivity, so sensation can go down. Or like up in terms of pain, but down in terms of pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, it, just inhibition, even in functionality. And then even some menstrual issues that come along with oh, having. absolutely. And yeah. one of the things that women don't know is that sometimes one of the things that happens is this nerve sensitivity that happens in the vestibule. So they're exercising their muscles, they're using these weights, they're using the yoni A in, you know, not the right way, and they create this excessive tension. And so what happens is that it does have a very deep effect on the muscles, and when it has that effect on the muscles, it creates this inflammation in the vestibule. Mm -hmm. And anything touching the vestibule, is called vestibular pulpitinia, it used to be called vestibulitis. Um, anything that touches it, even a light cotton swab, creates excruciating pain. And this is an issue of the muscles being too tight, being over-exercised, and not being released enough, or sometimes massaged. I'm so happy you mentioned that, because I also have friends with um, surgeons, women who are OBGYNs who do mm -hmm. surgeries, and they do complex surgeries to remove the whole um, vestibule of, of the yeah, woman's I've seen anatomy yeah. in order for her not to have pain, in order for her to have sex. And yet you're saying clearly that if we were to exercise properly from the beginning, understand that there's more to life than just pelvic tension, mm -hmm. that we can have tone, suppleness, and dexterity. And flexibility, mm -hmm. and openness, and receptivity. Yeah. You know that we don't have to be tight, right? Because of women, we have to have that sort of receptivity, we have to be open, we have to be able to open our legs and let someone in. And when you're that tight, well, what is that really telling you ultimately about who you are mm -hmm. and where you are emotionally? Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother topic. I love it. <clears throat> that we can go into. We spent like three years talking about that one. Yeah. You know? So just to finish, what would you say to the w women who are watching, who are being told day in and day out that they need to be tighter, that there's a, there's a massive marketing phenomenon around heavy weight lifting, um, walking around with all kinds of different crystals that are gonna relieve their psychological and emotional mm -hmm. issues. Like, what would you say? Because we are trying to counter this McEgg phenomenon. So, mm -hmm. so what, what do we stand for? Do you stand I for think this? I stand for balance. Mm -hmm. I stand for working with somebody who's very knowledgeable and working with somebody that you trust and is trained by the proper individual, you, you have to be careful. Everybody takes, you know, weekend course and they think that they can do it or they take a class and then they take the information and then they try to make it their own, but it's not the same as working with the master. So for me, as if you um, got to put tension in, right? You have to find that balance and sometimes there's so much tension that you're not even allowed to do a Kegel, you're not even allowed to contract. Mm -hmm. And many times I treat women that I say, under no circumstances are you allowed to contract your pelvic floor muscles or do any other kind of exercise that creates more tension. And that is something that they have a hard time wrapping their heads around. So if I were going to tell um, you out there what to do, I was saying, remember that there has to be fluidity, mm -hmm. there has to be flexibility, flexibility, that there has to be this tension in and tension out, that it's not good just to put all this in our body without releasing and to work with somebody who knows what they're doing, you know, and not to be caught up in the fad of the moment, because so many of us are. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and so that's what I would tell individuals, to really listen inward, and not to listen to an individual who's there telling you what to do. Because ultimately, if we override that message in our bodies, we're going to pay for it. If we don't listen to our hearts, and we know that now the divine feminine is stronger than ever, if we, we override that, mm -hmm. then what are we teaching our daughters? You know, what are we teaching other women? So it starts with us, and then from us, it goes up, like sort of like a ripple effect. Okay? So every woman has the opportunity to be, um, I don't want to say a role model, but sort of like, you know, like a role model for the next woman. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you go around saying, I'm doing 10,000 kegels, and, and you know that you're leaking, you know you have pain, you know you're not orgasming, you know that nothing can get in, you know you have pain with friction, then don't advertise something that you know is false. Right. That's not working for you. Right. Beautiful, thank you. You're not um, so where you. where can the viewer actually find you? What's oh, the right absolutely. Place to go? Um, you can find me at um, pelvicpainrelief.com.
Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Right there. I endorse everything Issa does. Thank you. We're colleagues, we're friends, we're mm -hmm. sisters. Um, and if you want to know more about me, if this is your first time meeting me, welcome. Definitely go to dareyourdesire.com where you can get lots of articles, other videos, and some free information and training. So I'll see you there.